are you are you vlogging Emma? A little bit. Hey guys, actually Kuro here. Today we're taking Emma fabric shopping. That's my We're trying we're trying video. to do some finding of proper fabrics instead of just getting weird broadcloth type stuff. This is intimidating. I want all this fabric and Taylor's trying to keep me in line. Get away from it! <laughs> but I want it, they're mermaids and cats. So I've got a couple things that I need to get. I need to get stuff for the red part of the torso, for the cape, potentially for the mask, if I can find some like PVC type leather, something to white out the eyes of the mask, and maybe gloves. Oh, and for the belt. I can't forget about the belt, because that I'm not painting a belt. Are you hiding? I have no idea what you're talking about. You have like your scratchy scratch tool. Yeah. And you have the I'm thinking for the whiting out of the mask, finding something like like the Halloween mask where it's see-through enough that I can see through it, but white enough and opaque enough that it's hard to see my eyes. Because um oh, and then this the, stuff is like you have to yeah. Because the link on. that Solo Grayson uh put up on like their DeviantArt and Tumblr when people ask, How did you make your mask? Uh it doesn't work. It's a good idea to have your friend take a photo of you or the fabric to make sure it shows up right in pictures. It's a little expensive, but I've gone for this, what's it called? Faux suede and faux leather, reversible black camel faux suede faux leather. I decided to go for this for the mask because it's more flexible. And ooh, I didn't even think, can this be spirit gums? It would probably be a little painful, but regardless, you would you could probably so you would put the white over the eyes, right? And yeah. then what you could do to make sure that that doesn't like fall off or start to fray when you're wearing it is you could put like another layer of like black cotton on the inside of it. Oh yeah. To help it kind of like smooth it down and then also to be a little bit nicer. Well, the like, thing is would this stand up to being spirit gummed over a couple of days? Probably. I might have to put some barrier. Yeah. I'll need to figure it out, but I do want this for at least the outside and for the gloves. And maybe for some of the detailing. I'm not going to use this for the cape though. That's too too expensive for the cape and not. Yeah, not maybe when I'm older. Want to want to what? Maybe when you're older. Maybe when I'm older. I think this is pretty close. Got something for this, and make sure that your brightness is all the way up. On your on your phone, Taylor reminded me of that. Yay! So we just got finished. There was a lot of stuff that we didn't film because we were just like, we've been here for two hours trying to find the correct stuff. But uh, basically, uh, find your friendly neighborhood uh, coupon dealer. And uh, we were about to have a total of around 88 to 90 dollars. And then with coupons, it got down to 63.20, which is a lot better considering the fact that I still have to buy a wig for Robin. And also, it's good to have a person like this uh, and bring your measuring tape with you if you haven't already measured. Um, in the description below will be my t uh, measuring tips and tricks. But Taylor worked at Men's Warehouse and then at Macy's Tuck Shop for almost a year and a half. A year and a year half. And a half. So she knows how to properly do that in measurements, and we got a lot of fabric. Yay! Yay! And I'll do a fabric tour a little bit later and explain why we chose what we chose. Yay! Fabric tour, fabric tour, fabric tour! Woo! Okay, that's better. So, I told you that I'd tell you why I bought what I bought. Let's start with the red. I showed earlier that this red matched very well to the uh, color of the thing. This is a slightly stretchy knit fabric uh, that's called this. I uh, had Taylor measure me uh, across my torso so we figured out that I need just a little over two yards. And that's why I got, it's a kind of a maroon. I wanted it to be able to compress 
well not compressed, but be less stretchy so that way it's more like a Kevlar type sort of thing. And then for the uh, cape, I got this fabric. This is a black slight uh, stretch knit. I didn't want it, I wanted to have structure, but not too much structure because I wanted to be able to billow in the wind. I wanted something else that I could basically uh, use. I'd, I wanted the color, and I couldn't find a color that like was the same thing as this, but since it's underneath it doesn't matter as much. This is this. It's basically just a cotton, and I got it in the yellow. And for the belt, I'm going to take a little bit of this. I got like two and a half yards, and I'm going to take the extra half yard and dye it a darker color because it's ever so slightly darker and then use it to basically make pillows for my belt. And this I got about two and a half yards as well because I'm also going to be using it to make gloves. I decided not to use, ignore my messy room. Here's some other stuff that I bought. I decided not to use this, which is the, uh, the suede for uh, the gloves because it would be, it's very hard to breathe through so my hands would get super super sweaty. Also that would be really 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 expensive but I got this for the mask and for detailing, for leather detailing. It's very nice. I also got some interfacing for structure on the edges of the mask and for structure of the pillows that I'm going to make. I'm basically making pillows but not pillows, I'm not gonna stuff them. I'm going to like try and make them strong enough where I can use it for holding stuff. And then I got this, which is this. It's a mesh and we found that folding it four times over, I can still, you know, see through it. But you can't see through it the other way. And that's what we got. Woo!